So in other videos, um, we've seen that psychoanalysis works, works as well as other psychotherapies, works better than uh, pharmacology, uh, as every psychotherapy does. Um, and we've seen in which conditions it works better or uh, worse, especially we concentrated in depression. But that question that someone made in the, in the, in the, in the previous videos, in the, in the comments about does psychoanalysis work or not, uh, is connected to this, how do we measure that it works, um, in which conditions, but it's super connected to why does it work? Not only if it works or not, but why? What does psychoanalysis, or for that sake, what does psychotherapy have that after, you know, talking or uh, going once a week or more times a week to, to someone's office and, and talking about yourself, why actually cures people from disease, from mental disorder? Um, and we don't really know. We, we do have certain suspects of why does it work. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have like something like 1,276 kind, different kinds of psychotherapies that work, uh, that have evidence, good evidence that they, like, they, they work, they cure people, they make people feel better. But is it logical to think that then there is 1,267 different ingredients of psychotherapy that make this work? I mean, why they all work? I mean, uh, they must have something in common. Uh, we saw already that for depression, there were the three C's that uh, psychotherapists share and they work. Um, but the, suspect, the suspects that we have about like why every psychotherapy works or why this 1200 and something psychotherapy works, the suspects are in three, uh, in three different uh, categories. So we think like, okay, Psychotherapy works because of something in the patient. So it works for certain people because certain people have certain characteristics that are going to make psychotherapy work. I don't know, I hope I'm not explaining myself there. Maybe I'm going to explain it better if I say what is the next suspect in, in, in that, trying to reply that question, which is like, there is something that the therapist does that works. So there are some therapists that are going to be better than other therapists because they do something, they have certain characteristics that make psychotherapy effective. And also we think about mm, maybe the thing is not in the patient, it's not like the patient has to be, has to have certain characteristics in order for psychotherapy to be useful or the therapist, but we think about what happens between them. And so it's the therapeutic relationship, the one that makes psychotherapy works. And, psycho and a psychotherapeutic relationship is a relationship between two or more people that looks a lot like a normal relationship, but it's different. It's a bit asymmetric. Some people speak about themselves while the other listens, once organizes the treatment, once the other follows instructions, etc. And that's, it's an asymmetric relationship and it's got certain, some special things to it. Um, one of the ways that we can think about how a person is that is going to make therapy work or not. Uh, we, for example, there are many different uh, things that have been studied, but with a lot of evidence, we have a thing called uh, self-critical self perfectionism. And it's a combination of high standards for oneself and high levels of self-criticism. So if you get a person in your um, in your consulting room that has incredible expectations for themselves, like sometimes unreal, and because they don't, it's really difficult to keep up with such uh, big expectations, they're always like criticizing themselves, sometimes really harshly, that actually it's gonna make therapy a bit more difficult and it's gonna make it a bit less effective unless this is the first thing you work towards towards the person having more realistic self-expectations and for them to be less drastic to themselves when these expectations are not coming to fruition. Um, it's, it's been related to people with high standards and high self-criticism. Um, this has been related to like the onset of depression. So depression happens earlier and faster 
and more easily if you're like this. You can have depression more easily. You're a risk group, as we will call it. Uh, then your depression is going to be more severe. So your depression is going to be more difficult to treat if you are like this. Uh, but also uh, your brain works differently, uh, your hormones work a little bit more differently, so you are always more um, propensed to have stress because of little things, so to get into this like fight or flight mode and you stop thinking and you just feel anxiety or depression. Um, and that happens much more if you're self-critical, if you're a perfectionist. And that happens with every treatment. So pills are going to work less if you're like this. Cognitive behavioral therapy is going to work less if you're like this. Psychoanalysis is going to work less if you're like this. So it does happen then that when you measure if people go to therapy and they do well, so they get cured from their depression, and you see how self-critical they are and how perfectionist they are. After that, it happens that changing that changes depression. So you first change how people criticize themselves and after a while, after a couple of weeks, the symptoms of depression start disappearing. And so if it's kind of, okay, so that thing in my patient was very a very important factor of why my psychotherapy worked, because I was able to treat that. And why, why does this happen? I mean, it's kind of obvious, like, self, like high self-perfectionism and self-criticism are things that, um, of course, they look a little bit like depression a lot, but it, this happens because self-criticism messes, messes up and, and disorganizes the third suspect, which was the relationship between the therapist and the, um, and, and the patient. When the patient is too self-critical, that relationship doesn't really happen. Um, it, it, becomes like, it becomes a bit limited. Like the interpersonal, interpersonal engagement that you might have with your therapist is not as committed because um, it's more important to keep a certain relationship with yourself that is self-critical. Uh, so your therapist cannot really enter your world. Um, and everything that the therapist says that might be useful for the patient gets immediately criticized by this other part of the mind of the patient that is always criticizing. So it happens that it's a, a limited interpersonal engagement um, and not only that, but then when your patient goes out of your consulting room, they also have a limited ex social experience with the rest of the world because they're very self-centered. So even if your family, they're really nice people, you're not going to be able to benefit from the niceness of these people. Unless your self-criticism and your high levels of perfectionism are treated first. We were saying before that for depression, for example, you want to treat the depressive symptoms. But in this case, actually, you want to treat that personality trait of your, of your patient in order to cure them from something else. Because there is no uh, self-criticism disorder, but it's at the root of many disorders and is at the root of a risk for psychotherapy not to be that effective. 